to part two of our uh, digit digitana digit, digitainability digitainability um, article th- uh, here on Tartlecast. You know, I was just thinking real quick. You, do you remember in the Matrix those things were like the metal arms that would come through? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what all of our cords look like in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, when you go, have you ever seen a have you ever seen a like a live studio? Yeah. Oh my God! The amounts of cords and stuff—they're everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. But they have it under management. You and I are just out of control. Oh yeah, we we have cords everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So what's it? Was so uh, combining digitalization and sustainability, uh, digitainability. So we're gonna get into what I want to kind of get into is how each of these systems are, are uh, holistic. Inter- that we have to have an holistic approach with them. And the article talks about this yeah. that they require consultation with many stakeholders and carefully planned. Transitions to allow new ways to feign it, phase in business as usual, you know, because business as usual with what we're doing now has to stop. As usual is killing us. So how as usual. we can't just stop something abruptly. You can't take a system that's been in place and refined over and over and over again to be the most efficient, have the best ROI, and then stop it all of a sudden and drastically go in a different direction. So phasing is really important. Phasing's huge, right? And so that phasing has to happen with a change in practices over time. And a lot of people are like, oh, let's just remove the squeaky wheel. Well, the squeaky wheel is doing a job right now, so we can't remove it altogether, but we can start to repair it over time to something that becomes way more efficient and way more beneficial. But taking that holistic aspect that you're talking about, everything's interconnected, Jason. Right. So we need to look at what that interconnectedness is and how we can actually effectuate on it. And these people that are stakeholders are human beings. So one of the great things we have at Turtle is called the TDEX. The TDEX actually shows the impact of people sharing their data and sharing their earnings towards these causes that are effectuating against these current problems that we have. And it gives them a holistic, you know, you know, pictorial and quantitative representation of that impact. So you at your level, at the micro level, can see your impact. And then businesses can also see the macro impact of what's going on across the entire marketplace. So then they can be like, we, know, we now know what the people need. We bought their data. We can see where they're putting their weight into with their earnings through these donations. We need to start to transition towards these things. This is what the people want. Do what they want. And now we have something to show specifically what is happening. That's all happening on Tartle. That's called that TDEX. It's a phenomenal thing that we have, and I'm excited about it because I like people being able to visualize that impact of them in their life. Yeah, and I, I think a great example, and they talk about this in the article, is consumer refusal to buy products. And they talk about like this big move in Europe Boycotting. for palm oil. Yeah, because we know that palm oil, a lot of it uh, comes from areas that rainforest gets knocked down in Indonesia and right. then replanted with these palms. And then in doing so, you kill that species diversity, which is extremely important. You know, like orangutans, or they talk about orangutans, the population, tigers, yeah. all those cra- things decline because. Deforestation. My, my yeah. Orville Redenbacher popcorn uses palm oil because it's five cents cheaper than using, I don't know, real butter or whatever it might right. be. Like, are you kidding? People will pay that extra five cents because you thought it was beneficial for you as a corporation. You were doing them a service. You actually did the world a disservice by forcing the logistics and supply chains to adapt to this thing that was crippling the planet. Yeah, and so, you know, with these drastic measures, with not phasing in, and they were using this as an example, which I may trigger several serious unforeseen accessory issues. Sure. Under pressure to sell their stock, palm oil producers may turn to markets where sustainability considerations, regulation standards are more relaxed. Yep. So they go into different countries. Like you're, you're seeing that with tobacco, uh, with cigarettes. You know, yeah. they're, they're going into, you know, third world countries and stuff They'll like that. They'll go where there's no surge in general. Yeah. <laughs> A decrease in sales and profit may induce producers to create further savings in production that may affect the quality of output and workers' wages. Have you seen this side note? This is this, are you, can have you seen Australia's? This? Have you seen Australia's packaging on cigarettes? Yeah, it's phenomenal. They show like your lungs, the actual yeah, dead yeah, organ yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But here's the crazy part. That's what the suppliers that like these businesses, because someone says don't use it, you say, We'll just go to the next person that'll use it because they're a little iffy on their morals. Well, this is even, this is, yeah, they, so they can relax, but this is even crazy. Listen to this. A decrease in sales and profit may induce producers to create further savings in production that may affect the quality of output and workers' wages, leading to the worsening of working conditions of foreign workers in producing countries. No. Because we're, we're, so we That's have to crap. See. You know what it is? The businesses shell it out onto people and they won't take the responsibility. They're like, 
well, we can't lose profits, so we got to take it away from our workers. No, you got to use something else. Okay, you need to figure it out. And if it's not going to work, if listen, if this is something that was truly good, it has to work for all, correct? Mm -hmm. And if it's not working and you're seeing that, do not put your debilitated profit margins, debilitating profit margins, and shell that off onto other people and take away their lives because you've chose to work with a resource that is inefficient in your business model. Just like the current milk industry in the US, it would cease to exist if there were not government subsidies supporting it. Yeah, and it said like a product boycott in Europe may also trigger actions in the producing countries, which could impact the imports of other products, destabilize trade practices, or stop or delay free trade agreement negotiations. And this is just a mention, but a few. Mm -hmm. When planning or executing any interventions, it is important to do no harm, which involves taking a step back and looking at the broader context and mitigating potential negative effects on the social fabric, the economy, and the environment. Yeah, well, guess what? Some things in the economy need to be shook up. I think those should be reversed. I think it should be environment. Environment, thank you. Social fabric, and then the economy. And then the economy. I have. I do not like the progression of how that was actually put mm, in there. Why yeah. do they keep putting money first? Yeah, exactly. No one is going to care about money if you have no planet to spend your money on. Yeah, and they said in the context of policymaking at an international level, the blanket analogy is more pronounced. Why would the citizens of a country commit to hard climate change mitigation policies if they do not know whether other states will implement similar policies? You want to know something? Because you shouldn't give a shit if somebody else is going to do it. It should be so important to you that you want to be the example. Mm, yes. And if they don't want to jump along on that bandwagon, that is their choice. But you need to do everything within your own power to be responsible for what you need to be responsible for. Yeah, and I, I like his statement. Listen to this. Yes. Uh, or her statement. If a nation does not believe that justice should guide international relations, why should it not try to free ride other nations' hard work? I like that. If a nation does not believe that justice should guide international relations, is it profit guiding international relations or is it justice to the environment and to people? Oh, that's a great question. Well, to me, and I guess to everybody else, corporations run governments, and so I'm going to say profits go first. Because number three on our big seven is human rights. Yeah. And so we look at climate stability, we look at human rights, and this holistic approach where they all are interconnecting, and we're seeing this with moving the blanket around, and I'm going to use that blanket analogy a lot from here on out. Thank you. Um, that This government and corporate transparency is number six. So all of these are playing in among themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and in this field... That we look at, and if we want to look at like a wartime field, it's very, very simple to... In the fog. Yeah, <laughs> in the fog. It's like, oh, okay, can we? what can we as humans control? Well, one, we elect these officials yeah. into office. We can control what we They're consume. puppets. We They're puppets to us and mm -hmm. puppets to corporations. Sure. That's what a politician is. Well, they, you wouldn't have lobbyists. if Lobbyists are the, the guys with the strings. Yeah, they're the palm oil guys that are coming in with their slick back palm oil hair. And Ew. <laughs> yeah, I can always <laughs> picture that for a second. Greasy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's how they talk. <laughs> the lizards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> reptilians. Yeah, these reptilians come in. The, um, no, but that's what it is. Like, you, you, need to, you need to look at those things, right? And guess what? When something gets covered, something gets uncovered, right? It's about striking that balance. So it's how is it that we start to share this responsibility? Because one person can't hide underneath this blanket right. all day long. Places need to be exposed, right? You got you to gotta weed out the bad stuff, all right? And there's going to be some, pa some pains, some birth pangs or whatever you want to call it, right. of this new you know, environment of ESG and climate awareness and education towards this. It's going to be uncomfortable. But, but I think if we're creative enough, mm -hmm. if we're creative enough, we can solve these issues and they be profitable. Um, we're doing that at Tartle. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm this saying. This is not a zero-sum game. You got to lose the mindset of zero-sum game. Get that stupid crap economic principle out of your mind. They were written by economists and economists change their principles all the time because no one's found one that works. Remove that from your brain. It is not zero sum. Yeah, and he said this, and I think this is uh, very important. It is important to make sure that whatever policies and investments are made, they are equitable mm. and conducive to the systems, systematic transformations necessary to into a more sustainable world. Yeah, so, so that transition, but I like the word equitable. You know what your vision is. You got to go get there, but you have to make sure when you're making those decisions, it's for the good of all as you're doing it. Yes. Okay. You have to share in that. It needs to be equitable. If you don't do that, you go back to that zero sum game ideology. You drive that idea of competition and you continue to cripple one another. 
We cannot survive off that crippling nature. No. We can't handle 2 billion more people if everybody's eye for an eye. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, and this is our big seven, but he has these key transformations and it includes this. Advancement in human capacity through improvement in education and healthcare. Education's like numero. We have this right here, educational access. If I got a stable climate, now I have to continue to educate. Yeah, responsible consumption and production. Responsible consumption. <laughs> That's just a bad dopamine hit habit that we've been driven into. And with the onset of artificial intelligence, it's been exacerbating how we spend. It's become efficient in almost driving those small dopamine hits, mm -hmm. how they, you know, how marketers and people who market these products or services want you to come and buy them more often. Yeah. And then decarbonization of energy. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about this. Like, what are you doing mm -hmm. burning something that's already anaerobic? Death Nothing good's going to come from that, right? And then access to nutritional food and clean water for all. Being inclusive with... Why can't everybody have access to water? I remember that thing that came out with uh, that guy that was running Nestle for a time and he felt that water was not a, like a human right. He thought it was something to be owned. And like, that's messed up. Well, I mean, you have water rights and stuff like that. I mean, you have water rights on the property that you own. There's wells and stuff that you're allowed to drill. And then I have a right to water. But you don't really have a right because you got to get a permit. Yeah, so from, th that's not a right. The it's city a false or, idea. Or county to be able to, to drill a well. That's a false idea. If I have to go ask somebody for permission for something that all human beings need to survive. Yeah, exactly. Do I need an air right? Do I need right to air, to yeah. oxygen? Well, if they could, they would tax Yeah, they'd that. probably be all over it, wouldn't they? They're going to tax that. I don't want to give them an idea, but they're going to tax air <laughs> to make sure it's clean. <gasps> don't take more than 30 breaths a day. If we if we charge a little bit more for taxes, but make sure your air is cleaner. We're going to put a meter on your chimney. Yeah, Every yeah. time that goes up, we're going to we're gonna bill you for it. So, And then building smart cities and digitalization. Yeah. Listen. If you need to show that interaction of these systems and data has the availability to do that, the fungibility to do that, the efficiency to show these interactions. And now with our cloud computing, we have the ability to put these models together to see how these, this holistic system is actually interacting. And I want to kind of get into the dichotomy of digitalization. Mm -hmm. So he talks about this. Digitalization is not a blessing in and of itself as it can exaggerate social divides Compound environmental risk and destabilize society. Well, you and I have showed That's that. That's the negative part. Look about Amnesty International, how they've been using AI, like mm -hmm. high amount of digitalization to actually control and track people, right? Amnesty International is like, we need to fight against that. Mm -hmm. The facial recognition technology with AI, that's it's racist. It puts people in buckets. It does all these other things. If I'm putting AI to marketing to get people to spend more, that is not helping the problem of our overconsumption. That's exacerbating it. Then he, on the on the positive side, he says this. That's the negative side. On the positive side, he says, on the other hand, digitalization can fast track the green economy by connecting people around the world and encouraging a culture of global cooperation. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's like using this data to bring awareness to people and show them that through their cooperation can create a positive impact. That's the best part about it. That's the right type of fast tracking that we want to be looking at. That is something that the TDEX helps show people. That's a fast track. It's a visual one for you. Yeah, and and I, I think, you know, in this, because I have been thinking about this, especially with corporations, you know, because they can lead this and be the leaders in this. Um, but I think it's, in our, especially when we have a capitalistic economy like we do, there needs to be incentive. You know, we need to incentivize. Incentives, yeah. You know, so like when you, we incentivize the milk, industry to give us we something don't incentivize, that's, we subsidize yeah we subsidize yeah, yeah yeah so um yeah then those are that's two different things we could talk about mm -hmm. but you know like they did the solar panel things or if you bought an electric car and stuff like that and then they did that for a period of time and then they took it away you know with different states and stuff and it's like why wouldn't you leave that and then increase it more and why why are and i don't want to get into a tangent of this but just one simple fact here in new mexico ever there's we have so many flat roofs because it doesn't rain here if you, every flat yeah. roof that is a business should be having what if homes giving, yeah All, whole, it should just everybody. be a requirement just put the damn solar, solar panel panels on it it's not no, that big of a deal we, then you're netting out energy to not just if if every business if every building had solar panels on it yeah i guarantee you we'd be I, I would like to see a study on that how much energy we'd be producing in new mexico alone just the amount of real estate on a roof that surface area is yes. incredible and think about how that begins to net out that carbon-based consumption of fuels that we're currently using yeah, and, and you know, like in New York City, they have 
um, a huge network of bees that are on top of buildings. You know what the you thing know, is? They put beehives up there. The guys that are, not the guys, the companies that are building these things, whatever they might be, they don't, they don't care. They don't right. want to pay extra. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Right. They don't, they don't see the value in themselves or what they're doing to this planet by wanting to pay a little bit extra to throw that solar panel on there. Yes, exactly. That's what it is. They just don't, they don't think it's valuable enough. They're more interested. How quickly can we build the house and fill it up? Yeah. And then, you know, companies are always looking at, at near term, Mm -hmm. you know, so if, if you do this project, you know, if you put these solar panels on these roofs, we're going to give you this for that year, we're going to give you this huge tax break. And then every year that, that you're giving back, Mm -hmm. you know, with, with those solar panels, then we're going to give you, you know, those are things that we have to look at and say, you know, for the environment long-term, how does that help? I would love to have an AI system that says if someone's going to go zone an area to build something, right. what that impact could possibly look like 50 years from now, positive or negative. Yes. And See, that should be a deciding out. factor right. whether or not that thing gets built. Yeah. Not it, how much do you pay the official there yes. to get the zoning permit to actually start to get to work. Yeah, because, and he talks about this, progression towards a more circular economy mm. has been limited to innovators and early adopter global companies. Are the, as there are several hurdles to mainstream its acceptance and adoption. Some of these hurdles include the de- geographic distribution of supply chains, mm-hmm. the complexity of materials, and the end of life dismantling of projects. So when we look at digital technologies, and that's where we're headed, you know, I mean, I, I would say majority, I don't know what percentage of economy now is just digital and then, you know, how it's exponentially growing. Yeah. You know, but I mean, most of our lives are controlled by, digitally online. That's correct. Um, and he says this, machine learning and data analytics enable companies to match the supply and demand for underused assets and products. And we've talked about that. Yeah. A real boost to a circular economy can be generated through digital matching platforms that can identify new high value reuse options for materials or waste products across industries. You need a combination of AI and human expertise. Yeah, what we were once ignoring or couldn't see, this can help bring light to. Yeah, so when we look at this circular economy, which I love, I love mm-hmm. the idea of that. It uh, all comes around. Yes. And then and then we say, oh, okay, we have these digital matching platforms and they can identify high value yeah. reuse options. So now we're eliminating waste, which yep. is going to give you a better ROI. We're, we're, we're finding ways that we can look at these materials and, and just instead of just filling up the landfills, we're actually able to reuse them. So if we eliminate waste, reuse products, what is that in long term? What is that going to look like for your ROI? It's going to look like Taos, New Mexico with their spaceships, <laughs> with the earth ships that they have. <laughs> so I, I want to kind of, cause we, we've gone over here. So um, let's close it out. What can we say here? Yeah. He says Give me this. something impactful through sustainability reporting. Organizations can report to the outside world on environmental and social performance. So I want to stop right there. The outside world. This viewpoint that it's us as a corporation, as a And then the outside? Yes. That is a mess. That perspective right there is probably the progenitor of most of the issues. We built walls. We built these corporation walls. Psychological walls. That, and we've created corporation borders mm-hmm. around our to protect because everything is risk. We got to negate risk mm-hmm. and we got to have better ROI, better shareholder value. And so- we actually have from the CEO on down, we have the operating at this razor's edge of insanity because that's what it is because you can't expect a company just to be continually make more profit every year. No. I mean, the, 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 you're setting yourself for some falsehood. That's why you have... It's a ridiculous ass that's going to only drive people to make bad decisions. And cheat. Yeah. Cheat. Yeah. Abuse. A lot of bad things happen when you just force people into that corner when you look at your when you look at your corporation as a river with you know you they have the fingers in the river you know Mm -hmm. and they and they and so you it's one river but it has so many outlets to it all the estuaries and everything that pour out and then inside of those are ecosystems in Mm -hmm. each of those yep but they're all one river yep it is the same as as your corporation your corporation has it's almost like our, our circular system it has this holistic uh pulsating that goes throughout the whole world but if you have a large corporation in the fortune 500 you need to identify all these little points that you have all across the globe yeah and then once you you have to identify it first once you identify it now you can start whacking away if you want to use that you can start whacking away at these points where you're destabilizing that area where you're going against you know 
the globe in this area where you have you, you could use our big seven and say where are we where are we looking at right now in our corporation we're ge general electric let's use them because they're huge and have so many in ge what parts of the country are we going against human rights right and be responsible to that. You need to look at that. That needs to be a barometer for you rather than putting up a wall and saying, we just do this. And then whatever leaves outside our walls, we're not going to think about it. And then uh, how can we improve our supply chain to be more sustainable? Yeah. That's, these are, these are qu questions that you can ask. Mm. But that this whole idea of us and them is going to kill us. Mm -hmm. And when I say us, that's all of us. Your corporation and the, the outside the world. People, it's everything. one world. That's what's one world. Yeah. It's a, cl it's a big old sphere mm -hmm. floating around in the darkness. That's all, right. all it is. Hey, Alex.